Hello once again, and we're going to be discussing now hot at all times, hot in accessory or run. You know you have accessories in your car, sometimes that are on all the times. Now, from this block diagram that I call it, you see a digital clock, and over here you see a horn switch going to two horns, and one is, is a high-pitched horn, and the other one is a low-pitched horn, and a cigarette lighter through a fuse. Now, hot at all time means it's always connected to the battery. You don't need to put the the key in the car and to turn it necessarily. All you do is press the horn switch on the steering wheel. Guess what? Battery voltage is there. And then you can uh, 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 select the horns or press the horns to sound. Cigarette is the same thing. You don't have to have anything in the ignition key. So, an ignition switch. So therefore, the heating element is this symbol. All you do is close the switch when you put the cigarette lighter in, and obviously it'll work. Same thing with the radio. You see, digital clock is on all the time. It's always, on the, it's always the right time. That's because it's always on. In other words, battery voltage is always present all the time. If you lose your clock uh, uh, display, you lost your battery. Now, on a different note, and a more, hopefully, a simpler note, let's go to something called ignition, <clears throat> how we produce spark. Not to get too technical, but the transformer, the ignition coil, they call it. We have a battery, and we have a transformer. Again, ignition coil. This dark winding loops that you see over here is referred to as the primary. The other one over here is called the secondary. There is no contact between this one and these loops. When you take a wire, a piece of wire, you and you make it into, into turns, you put one over here, you put the other one next to it. You have a transformer. So in other words, when current flows, and let's see how it flows, from the positive by us, right? Goes through here, 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 as many turns as there are. And eventually, it goes through a switch, which turns this on and off, back to <clears throat> the negative. Now, while this is being done, this, there is a magnetic field being built up. Also, what the properties of in, of in, induction or coil is to 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 oppose the magnet the building of the magnetic field. It tries to reach its maximum. There is something called the CMF which tries to oppose it. So, anyway, again, not to get too technical. Once that happens in a in a regular transformer, we have AC. So from AC the voltage will be induced into the secondary. <clears throat> we don't have AC, we have something called a battery. How does it work then? Well, <clears throat> if you look at it, we need something to give us a varying voltage, on and off, on and off. And by that, those means, we can induce a voltage into the secondary. Remember, the secondary might have thousands of turns on it compared to the, the, the primary. But the primary current flows like this through all of these wires, through this, induces a, 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 a voltage through the secondary. When does it do that? When we break the circuit of the primary. How do we break it? Over here, we break it by a switch. On and off, on and off. We need that varying voltage from the switch being turned on and off to induce a voltage from the collapsing magnetic field because of, the, of this being turn on and off, it collapses the field, that collapsing magnetic field is induced into the secondary, and where does the secondary go to? Your spark plug. Okay, now if you understand that theory, let's build on that. So we can use DC for a transformer, or what they call an ignition coil. As long as we have something of varying voltage, we turn it on and off, on and off. If you would have a flat 12 volts, meaning there will be no switch here, you cannot create the magnetic field because it has to be changing. So therefore, remember this picture because we're going to go a little more, more 
deep in, in detail. We have a switch to turn this on and off from this point to the, the primary. Now, let's go to the other diagram, as you'll see. <clears throat> now, you see this diagram? <clears throat> we took the advantage of this. Did we change anything in this diagram? We put, we put a few more accessories and components into it. But I like this diagram because I think it's easier to understand. Number one, as far as the primary or the ignition coil, we still need a switch. It goes through a switch and we still need a battery. That's just, <clears throat> that's basic electronics. So the B plus goes over here <clears throat> into this primary. This is the secondary. Primary goes here. Now it goes through, remember before we had a little switch. That's why I told you to remember the other one. We have something, this is called a symbol of a transistor. A transistor is a device that can be used either as an amplifier to amplify a voltage, power level, a power gain, or a, a audio gain, or it could be used as a switch, meaning it could be used on and off, on and off, on and off, like a button, like the switch that we had before in the other one. We're going to switch this on and off, on and off, on and off. And what are we doing by doing that act? We're turning him on and off. We're turning, the, this is the top side of the primary, the B+. plus. This is the bottom side. The bottom side is the one that's being toggled on and off. By doing that, <clears throat> the, the field is building and collapsing, building, expanding, collapsing <clears throat> that criteria will allow us to have what will induce a voltage into the secondary now from this photo obviously this looks like it has the most about the same turns as this but that's not true this has much more turns you can have about 30 kilovolts 20 kilovolts whatever which is 30,000 volts to the secondary and from that when we collapse this magnetic field like the switch did in the previous one, we're inducing a voltage This in the company called the distributor. The distributor obviously turns around and turns through every, <clears throat> every spark plug. In this picture, this is a four-cylinder because we have four spark plugs and four spark plug wires coming from the distributor. Basically, the idea is we want this voltage Number one, to become bigger, to be, to become bigger. That's happening by the transformer giving us a much higher voltage spike at this time. Then we want it to go to every cylinder. The distributor rotates, and as the rotor, uh, rotor and cam rotate, we turn it to the proper one, of course, in the proper firing order of the cylinders. Now... <clears throat> We just said this before. We're going to take out the switch that we had before we could put on a transistor. Fine. A transistor is a device. This is the output. This is called the collector and the emitter going to ground. <clears throat> and we toggle this device called the transistor. This is called the base. By not by a switch, but by, you guessed it, the computer. Engine control module. Now we can have a PCM. We can have an ECM, we can have an ECU, doesn't matter. What this is trying to show you is, that I've showed you in, in quite a few um, videos of computers, these are the things that are inside the computer that we don't see. This is internal in the computer. If this is the module, this is inside of it. The resistors, the symbol for resistor is inside. The transistor here is inside. <clears throat> this computer is going to decide when is the perfect time to go and turn this on and off. When it turns this on, we get current flowing here and, it, and we get a, a magnetic field building up. When it decides to turn this off like a switch that's being turned off or open, guess what's going to happen? This field is going to collapse. That's what we want. When it collapses, that's what induces the secondary voltage into this. So basically, he's in the place of the switch, the physical switch that we had before. So he decides, the computer decides when to do this. But when does the computer know when to do this? Guess what? <clears throat> 
input signals. Remember I told you there are input signals to a computer, there are output. This is the output. How do I know that this is the output? Because this is something that computer is controlling. It's if, it, if the computer controls something, like a fuel injector, in this instance, a transistor which will control the spark, it is an output. A motor, <clears throat> like we have so much, uh, uh, many times, a fuel pump, it is an output to the computer. The input, guessed it, intake air temperature sensor, barometric pressure sensor, closed throttle position sensor, all these engine cool, all these things, as you can see, are inputs, all these sensors. They're giving the, the, the present conditions of the engine, <clears throat> of the air being drawn in, the temperature of the air, how much air, how much is the person stepping on that on that um, a gas, a gas pedal, how much is he opening it, closing it, how much is the temperature in the coolant in the engine, the crankshaft, the camshaft, all these things. Is he in park? Is he in neutral? Is he in idle? So all these things over here are being determined by by chips and instructions that have been engineered or designed or designed inside these chips, microprocessors and other ones, by engineers telling him if this happens, then you do this. If this happens, then you do this. Not to get too technical, that's how he knows by the set of instructions that are in here. Could be a million instructions, doesn't matter. A microprocessor is a microprocessor. A microprocessor can handle a million instructions. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> now, so we just said these are inputs. He takes this into consideration. When he takes this into consideration, say, so you know what? Now I gotta, I gotta uh, 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 make this primary uh, uh, collapse a little earlier. Sometimes I gotta make this primary collapse a little later. So that's the ter determination, the decision he has to make. But he has all the software inside of him. Then he controls this. So, like I said before, somebody was asking me, "How do you know if the computer is good or bad?" Well, you know how it's, you know how you how they determine that. These are inputs. Inputs going in, <clears throat> making sure all the inputs go in. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine inputs going in from, <coughs> excuse me, the different um, sensors. So you could have nine pins here. Forget about this one arrow. Nine pins for each of these nine sensors, making sure these go in. If the input goes in, what did, what did we just discuss? You have to have an output. If all the inputs go in, the computer has the B+, plus, the 12 volts. The computer has a ground. Uh, here's a ground, a physical ground to it or whatever, right? Then we look, make sure there's an output. How do I know if the co computer is good and not good? If there's an output. If there's no output coming out of the computer... In this case, going to the transistor to turn this on, then we fault the computer. But under the condition that all the inputs are going in, he will not give an output if he does not have the inputs. So we check the pins, make sure each one has, each one has a proper input. Okay, that's the most important. Output, for it comes the input. If you have an input, you should have an output. Not necessarily, only if it works. Okay? That's how you would look at a computer. Again, this could be to a fuel pump. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if it's spark, whatever it is, ignition, whatever it is. I, If I look at the outputs, if this computer, let's say instead of ECM, it's a PCM, does not give an output, I fault the computer. Because he has two jobs to do the computer. Get an input, give an output. Now... I want to know over here. And this is the ignition coil. Let's say I don't have no. I have no spark. Where do you think I would go to me, to see the spark? Would I go over here at the primary to see if it is a spark? If you said yes, it's incorrect. Would you go over here to see if there's a spark? No. Would you go over here to see if there's a spark? If you said over here, you're correct. I would go over here to make sure there's a spark of a, a, a higher induced voltage spark. I would not go here because this is just 12 volts from the battery. Here, you could see a signal. You should see a signal from the computer over here. Like I said, I wanted to do a video about the ignition coil and signals with the computer with a scope. Like I don't want to get too technical. 
uh, with the with these with these um, test equipment to use. So, but the the theory is you go to the output of the ignition coil, which is the secondary. See if there's a spark. If there's a spark up to here, what does that mean? That means the computer is working. That means I have 12 volts. That means all the sensors gave their inputs. He gave an output. The computer is working. And if I have an output over here, that means ignition coil is working. What's the problem? Work on the distributor. Okay? Now, here's a picture of all Hondas, Hondas, Toyotas that you've seen so many times. The distributor is right here. Like we just said, that's why I started with that one. The distributor is here, and it goes right to spark plug wires, and the spark plugs are right here. So now you have a better idea, I hope, of what uh, of understanding how to find spark, how it is created. And hopefully go to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto, and my other one, Automotive Electronic Schematics for Joseph, as I get the phone. Thank you so much.